Hello, my name is Nathan Lentz. I'm a professor of biology at John Jay College, and my laboratory works on forensic science, and we develop new projects, uh, new techniques, new methods to help uh, sort of add to the toolkit that we have in forensic science to pursue uh, in criminal investigations. And um, one area that uh, we've been working on recently is called forensic botany, which is the study of plant evidence that could be part of a crime scene. And we had this idea of using flowers because uh, there's been some other ca interesting cases where leaves have been used in forensic cases where you know a body had been moved from one place to another and they used the leaves to sort of dissect that. We were able to connect one uh, victim to a suspect's house, uh, the, the backyard specifically, which was pretty interesting. So uh, not a lot's been done with household plants and we thought that uh, that would be a good place to start, particularly flowers because excuse me, flowers are releasing pollen all the time. Pollen is so light, very small, high in DNA content, and um, flowers reduce, uh, uh, release millions and millions of these uh, pollen grains. So uh, pollen grains can attach to your person, can attach to your clothing, can uh, attach, get stuck in your nostrils. You can carry this with you for potentially days in some cases, and we can detect that later. So we thought that would be a good place to add to the toolkit that forensic scientists could use to um, recreate events of the past of where certain people may have been or not been. And so um, we wanted to develop genetic tools, not just microscopy, because a lot of times you take pollen grains and you um, look at them under the microscope and sort of try to make a determination. But that's a little bit subjective, which means it can be more easily challenged in court. Even when you have experts that are very, very good at this, they're still making a judgment call. It's still an opinion, uh, even if it's a very, very strong one. Um, so we wanted to do genetic tools because this comes with sort of statistical power. Uh, we can we can quantify how certain we are of a certain match. So um, we, we turn to barcoding, which is the use of DNA sequences uh, to identify the species of, of origin of some, some, some sample. And um, DNA barcoding in plants is kind of complicated because uh, basically the plant genome is a bit of a mess. It's a long story, but over evolutionary time you have hybridization of uh, different clades of plants and they exchange genetic material and uh, in bizarre ways, bizarre uh, compared to animals. And so um, DNA barcoding in plants is quite unusual. And so we took what we call a multi-locus approach where we looked at several genes. We went around New York City to bodegas and florist shops and, and um, grocery stores and collected the kind of plants, kind of flowers that are found in people's homes, gathered a huge collection of them. And then for each of those, we sequenced several genes. We actually started with five genes, but we narrowed down to three different genes to look for where these plants, where these flowers are all different, uh, or where they have differences among the different species, and see if we could use that and exploit those differences um, such that if you had an unknown sample, you could say which species it came from. And we've been uh, reasonably successful. We're prepared to, soon preparing to publish uh, the first phase of this project. Uh, where we have a toolkit that's useful for discriminating several dozen, a uh, couple dozen um, uh, flower species from each other uh, using these DNA barcodes that we've discovered in, in each one of them. Um, and it's a great approach, it's a very DNA based approach, um, lots of fun lab work to do in a project like that. Uh, and we hope with more development, big population surveys, we might be able to get to a point where this can be useful for forensic investigators. Um, we also show in, in a series of experiments that you actually can detect pollen uh, in an individual's nostrils um, hours, days um, after they've inhaled that pollen. Um, it depends on what they've been up to, if, they're, if they have a cold, that kind of thing, but um, you, we, this pollen can attach itself in a, in a pretty sticky way and you can detect that later. So we think that this is a fun avenue of research and that it will be fruitful in the future. Eventually what we'd like to do is develop tools uh, using microsatellite DNA to identify which particular plant of origin, a flower of origin, that pollen came from so that we could place a potential suspect at, in a specific room or near a specific plant. A little bit trickier to do that. Number one, we have to discover the microsatellites and, and characterize them. But more importantly, uh, plants, a lot of plants are, are propagated asexually, so they're sort of all clones. So this becomes a little bit difficult to do. But that's the next phase of the project. We have some groundwork laid for that. But um, the, whole, the whole point is to use plant residue and plant-derived material in forensic science and criminal investigations. And so that's one of the things that my laboratory does. Uh, once again, I'm Professor Nathan Lentz from John Jay College in New York City. All right.